Hi guys and welcome to Lara Recipes, a Laravel tutorial course for beginners. I would like to start by simply show you the final product. So I just did download an HTML template and I did my own tweaks to make it like a recipe website. So this is the HTML version that we will be downloading. And then this is the final product that we will be doing together by the end of this course. So at the top, we have a carousel for recipes. We have a search bar. Then the latest recipes will be displayed here. Just below that, we have three sections with recipes grouped by categories. So I'm displaying here only three categories. Below that, we have a CTA through an Instagram page. Below it we have our footer to the left side we have the logo and the brand name just below it we have the navigation links so this is the home page you just saw it then we have an index of categories as you can see with pagination then we have all the recipes of the website listed here with pagination as well below it we have the contact us inside this we have the recipe show view where you can see if it's a featured we will have this badge then we have a hero image or a cover image of the recipe we have how many views it has and then under which category it's published the title of the recipe some flags then an excerpt a recipe details and links to navigate simply inside the recipe below this we have featured recipes just below that as three featured recipes to the right side we have categories and related recipes if we have any in our case right now we don't have any but just let me open another example really quickly this is how it will look like if we have related recipes so the last the last part of the website would be the contact us page we just have an image and then a contact us form inside this form like I, were, I wired this form with two things. First of all, we are taking the response out of that and we are storing it inside the database. And the second thing, which is the obvious one, we are sending an email with this contact details. And now if we to submit it, simply we are presented with a message that it has been successfully sent and immediately I receive an email. If I to open it simply, this is the email content. And as you can see, I tweaked the design just a little bit so I can show you how you can customize the look and feel of your emails. Now let's talk about why Laravel. Laravel is a pretty famous framework. And in order to show you that, I went to Google Trends and I just compared Laravel as a keyword with those frameworks. So in the past five years as a web search results, as you can see, the other frameworks, they are not even competing with Laravel. So I'm not saying those are bad frameworks. I'm just saying Laravel is pretty famous. Laravel offers a winning combination of modern web development tools and Laravel simplifies complex tasks making web development really fast and more efficient. I have been using Laravel for the past eight years, and I hope you are excited as I am because doing projects with Laravel is really pretty fun. I would like not right now to tell you about the five benefits of using Laravel. Laravel has a really simple and clean syntax. It's easy to write code with it. It's really pretty documented, and you can feel that whenever you are like copying snippets out of Laravel documentation website. And at the same time, Laravel has a really robust architecture. It uses MVC. We will talk about that in a bit. When it comes to the ecosystem, it has a really rich ecosystem of packages, first party packages and third party packages. For the tools, Laravel has a built in tools and features which will help you do almost anything in really easy way. For the community, it has an active and supportive community. So whenever you are stuck at something, and as developers, you know, this is like the, the first one bus killing thing when you are developing, and the community is really, really rich. So whenever you are searching for something, most definitely you're gonna find an answer for it. So let's talk about a little bit more about the syntax. See, I gathered some examples straight out of the documentation so I can show you just how easy it is. So imagine with me that this is how easy it is to take the content of a file. And if it's a JSON file, this is how easy it is to take it and simply immediately decode it as an array. And if you would like to check if a file exists on the cloud, this is how easy it is. If you would like to put content or write the content of a file, and this is how easy it is if you would like to do it locally or in the cloud. Another maybe famous really simple examples would be sending an email to a list of people or list of emails or sending perhaps a notification to a list of to a bunch of users if you would like to send them a notification regardless of the nature of this notification if it's like an email based a database based or a push notification or even an sms and this is how easy it is to simply retrieve all the records out of your database so you can perhaps loop through them and now let's simply get back so we can talk about the architecture as I said earlier, Laravel uses MVC as an architecture, which is an initialism of model, view, and controller. Here, I brought just a simple analogy, so maybe we can ease things out with it. 
So imagine like you are at a restaurant right now and you are ordering something. You will be presented with a menu. So you can use this menu and you can pick and choose something. When you pick and choose something out of this visual thingy, then you will ask the waiter or waitress to bring it to you. So the waitress or the waiter themselves, they are not doing the food for you, right? They're not preparing it for you. They are simply going to the kitchen and the kitchen inside this restaurant will do the business logic. They will prepare your menu. And after that, they will give it back to the controller or to the waitress so she can give it back to you. Exactly, this is how MVC works. So the end user will see only our view. They will interact with the view. However, behind the scenes, the controller is responsible for bringing the logic out of the model and then retrieve it back to the end user. And I would like to propose one more example. In this analogy, all of us maybe are driving cars, right? So when you are driving the car, whenever whenever you are getting into the car, all the visual parts, like the doors, the windshield, the dashboard itself, those are the visual representation of the car, right? And you are using your steering wheel and your paddles to interact with the engine and maybe the wheels themselves. But like the controller, the steering wheel is simply giving commands to the engine and the engine get, getting getting back those information to the car itself so we can see it in the view. We can see the dashboard changing, right? So this is exactly how MVC again works. And I know for a fact, most, of, most likely guys, you would like to see some code in order to, just to understand more. So I brought those code snippets so I can explain just a little bit more about MVC. As you can see here, our model is simply a PHP class derived from the model itself as an eloquent model. We will talk more about Elkwan just in a second. And simply it's a PHP class. It has some features, it has some helpers. And at the same time, it has like relationships with other models. The view itself is a HTML file on steroids. It's a blade, which is our templating engine when we are using Laravel. It's an amazing tool, so it can, it can just help us. And we will talk definitely about Blade just in a second. But as you can see, this is something familiar with you because it's an HTML form or an HTML code or tags. But at the same time, yeah, it has some strange things to us right now because those are blade specific directives. When it comes to the to the controller, simply it's a PHP class derived from the controller, which is a class provided by Laravel. And as you can see inside this class, we have right now only one function. And in fact, we call them actions because if you remember the waitress, she did an action by bringing the food, taking your order first and then bringing the food. The same thing with the car. It does an action inside this controller, it moves forward and perhaps back. So inside our controller, we have this action which is doing indeed an action. It's like the index listing of all recipes because we are inside the recipe control, right? So when it comes code wise, regardless of what we have right now, because we will talk in details about that, but just quickly, we are using the recipe to simply retrieve all recipes. And then we are going and using the view again to simply have a rendered version of this view returned to the end user. So I hope those two analogies with this explanation just get you started as an MVC architecture user. When we are using Laravel, you will understand those much more. Now let's get back and talk about the ecosystem. Oh boy, when it comes to the ecosystem. Laravel has a really rich ecosystem. So it uses Composer as a package manager to install the libraries. So if you have any package on packages.org, you can simply require it or install it inside Laravel, and then you can use it. Maybe with some tweaks, because sometimes you need to have it just compatible with Laravel. And to top it all off, Laravel themselves, they are providing us with 24 first party libraries. So they will help you to do almost anything with Laravel. So imagine with me, you would like to have like a, a development environment, right? You will have like two tools from Laravel. If you would like to have even code formatting, you will have that in Laravel. If you would like to have tools to help you, I don't know, like receive money or send money, or at the same time, maybe you just have uh, simple tools to help you out with the full text search or at the end maybe when you are done you would like to have tools to help you deploy your, your application serverless or normal or even add nifty features like zero downtime deployment all of those are tools some of which are paid tools honestly but they are really beneficial and now i would like to proceed by talking about the tools that laravel has so laravel has built-in tools and features let me just tell you about not every tool, but I picked up those eight tools. I'm going to talk about like the first four a little bit in details, but I'm going to just mention quickly the other four features. So the first thing would be when we talk about Laravel is the entry point. And in Laravel, it's called the routing system. 
Inside Laravel, you can write multiple routes with different features and different limitations. So again, I brought up this simple analogy maybe so I can again ease things out. And believe me, they are already really easy. Okay, so imagine you have this building where there are like multiple entrances to this building, right? So this unit has like two doors, one for the customers, the main door, another one for employees, which is with card or kind of authenticated only for employees. And it has like a window, which is not a door, a window, but for, for drive through. And it has different big door only for goods acceptance or maybe, you know, like vendors entrance. Inside Laravel, we have, if this is like, the, if the building is your project as a Laravel project, we have multiple entries indeed to interact with, the with our application. We will have like publicly accessible links as a web links, which is accessible from any, any point on the internet. And we have employees, which is like a web page, but this web page is only accessible for authenticated users. Imagine it like a, as a dashboard or as a, or as a back office. And then we have the drive-through, which is perhaps an application program programming interface, which is only an API, you can interact with our, with our Laravel application, but only from this window. And maybe we can have like a console as a CLI. And this is again, a way to interact with our, with our application. However, only through the terminal. And all of those are routes. So I'm going to begin right now by giving you like the first example of as the simplest form of routes. Here in this example, this is what comes with any fresh installation of Laravel. So simply I'm explaining this because it's the first thing you see in the web routes. This is simply a definition of a new route, which is of a method type or a request type of get into the root of our application because this is the URI, which is what's written in your browser. So whenever you are doing number one on number two, number three will be executed. So if you to do HTTP get request on the root of your application, number three here will be executed. So in other words, case, we are simply returning a rendered view of our welcome page. And just keep in mind that welcome is simply a blade template. So we will write it or we will find it as .blade.php. Again, much more on that later on in the course. So in simple words, you can have multiple method types. You can have get post or update. And at the same time, you can have multiple routes. So each route you can write it, you can write it on its own and you can connect it with anonymous function like in this case, or later on, as we will see, we will connect them simply with controllers so we can clean up our code. And believe it or not, that's it with routing, nothing fancy here. So let's get back and talk about artisan. Artisan is a CLI command. It helps us so much and it will assist us through the whole process of developing our application. So simply inside the command console, you can write just for example, PHP Artisan and then the command that you want. In our case, those two examples, I just wrote make a model and then I give it the model name and the flags that I want. So if you to give it flags as MFS, simply those are the initials of just simply migration factory and cedar. So in this case, it will generate four files. It will generate the recipe, the factory, the migration, and at the same time, the cedar for this file. And it knows for a fact what are the naming conventions should be. So artisan is really smart. So it will just give the date, for example, for the migration file. It will do the plural name of the file. Inside that migration, it will even fill the table name. I know you have no idea about migrations. We will talk about that in a second, but just understand that Artisan is really, really helpful command. It will help us so much and we are going to use it all of the time. Now let's get back and talk about the database tools and Eloquent itself. So when it comes to the tools, we have three main tools other than Eloquent. So we have migrations, factories, and seeders. To explain it all, have this analogy with me. So imagine you have, or you would like to open a bakery. And in this bakery, you would like to have a, as a start, a place where you can do your planning when it comes to where to place the ovens, how many countertops, where they are, or the tools that you need. So migrations are architectural plans for your bakery. And then you have like cookie cutters, you have some bakers. So the bakers will simply use that place you provided with so many cookie cutters so they can produce so many cookies. And this analogy, simply the bakers are the seeders and the seeders, they are using simply factories that you define with this specific shape. They will fill 
database because you provided the structure for them. So in migrations, we are only creating the database scheme. We are creating tables. We are maybe renaming a column or two. So we are doing structural related things inside migrations. And in the factories, we are simply just defining how the data is going to be populated or how we are going to generate the data. But the seeders are the generators. I will show you good snippets in a second. But as you can see, this QT Baker is the seeder and indeed even code wise seeders are pretty simple and intuitive you just have a recipe factory and you create for example 50 recipes perhaps with a relation or not what behind the scenes is happening is the usage of the factory itself which is the way that the data should be generated and these data are simply stored inside the table that you just provided as a structure inside the migration file so usually this is what we will do we usually begin with a migration file we define the database as a structure then we write a factory for this model and then we write a seeder in order to seed our database with a dummy data and now let's dive a bit more about database relation things so we are going to talk right now about eloquent which is an object relation mapper eloquent in simple terms is just a translator so imagine the scenario where you went to a foreign country you sat in a foreign restaurant and you don't speak the language where you are at so you needed that translator so imagine with me you came to a foreign restaurant who speaks a different language than yours in this analogy it's an sql you are a you are a developer who speaks only php so you need that translator in between and this translator simply is the eloquent rm so usually we only interact with eloquent and behind the scenes we don't even write an sql if you if you wish you can but we, we usually don't so you simply write php code and eloquent on its responsibility to simply translate to that that to sql and back to you from sql to php so again let me show you just a snippet of code so we can understand a bit more so here in this example, this is an SQL and the equivalent of that is this PHP version. So you can have this line simply to retrieve the latest recipe that you published thanks to Eloquent as a model. This is, will be the, the equivalent of that if you would like to write it in SQL. Definitely we, are, we will be using in this tutorial Eloquent all the time. So now let's get back to the tools and simply talk about Blade, the templating engine. So Blade as a templating engine, it's really fun, it's really powerful and it makes actually coding or writing HTML code fun again. So you don't have to repeat yourself when it comes, for example, to multiple pages and you have the header and the footer across all the pages. We, you know the suffer of just simply making that change in all the pages because you changed something or the client asked you to do something with that. So simply it's usually so hard to deal with HTML as a plain HTML. But with Blade, things are really fun. It has so many directives to help you scaffold an amazing and complex layout. And at the same time, it will ease the connection between your data and the HTML itself. Larvel Blade is like a website builder that uses building blocks. Instead of writing every part of the page from scratch, you can use these pre-made blocks to quickly create web pages. It's like building with Lego, as you can see with this picture. So now let's talk about the tools. Laravel out of the box has an authentication system where if you would like to implement signing in, signing up, or forgot your password link or email, then it's easy to implement using Laravel. At the same time, it has authorization. So if you would like to have access control list, if you would like to have some gates and some policies, so, so certain people can access certain areas, you can implement that very easily using Laravel. And definitely using Laravel, you can pretty easily send emails or push notifications. And when it comes to testing, if you would like to go TTD with your code, then definitely you can do that. You can, you can use PHP unit or PEST. And at the same time, if you would like to have end-to-end -end testing, then there's a first party library to do so. And now let's talk about the community that Laravel has. Laravel has active and supportive community. This means you will find plenty of documentations and tutorials and even forms so you can seek some help perhaps, or you can share your knowledge. And with that being said, let's just code. I'm